The House Government Reform Committee held a field hearing today in Boston to investigate allegations of corruption in the Boston office of the FBI. University of Massachusetts President and former State Senate President William Bolger, subpoenaed by the committee, took the Fifth Amendment, declining to answer questions about his fugitive brother, James Whitey Bolger, a former informant for the FBI. Indiana Congressman Dan Burton chairs this 15-minute hearing. Seated. For just a minute. We, we have a few formal things right. to do here. Okay. Good morning. The Committee on Government Reform will come to order. I think yesterday we, uh, we uh, put in the record all of the exceptions that we needed. Edmund Burke said that the only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. He wasn't talking about why we're here, but he might just as well have been. Everyone in this room knows that the Government Reform Committee has been trying to get to the bottom of what happened here back in the 60s and subsequent to that. We've tried to be thorough. We've tried to be fair. Perhaps if others had done this, we wouldn't need to be here. Perhaps. People like Joe Salvati wouldn't have spent their lives in prison, and people like Roger Wheeler wouldn't be dead. But we are here, and we're going to do our very best. For the most part, cooperation has been the rule. We've talked to hundreds of people. Most have tried to be helpful. We haven't needed to issue many subpoenas, and I'm encouraged that most people genuinely want to know what happened. And most of them want to help, and that's a good sign. I'm glad Mr. Bulger's here today. I'm glad he's going to testify. But I do wish it had been a little bit easier. The committee wasted months when executive privilege was claimed over documents. Yesterday, you could see how important those documents were. I wish Mr. Bulger had been a little more willing to discharge his civic duty and cooperate. We don't need to be running into court like we did yesterday. It's a big distraction, and it takes valuable time away from what we're trying to get accomplished. But I'm glad we are going to move forward. I'll close by reminding you why we're here. Rogue members of the FBI, up to the highest levels, protected informants at the expense of innocent people. Informants committed murders with impunity. Killers were tipped off so that they could flee before being arrested. Local investigations of murders, murderers and drug dealers and arms smuggling were compromised. And when people went to the Justice Department and the FBI with evidence about murderers, some of them wound up dead. It's sad, it's tragic, it's unbelievable, but it happened. I think an awful lot of good people stood by and did nothing. Hopefully, we'll never see anything like that again. But we can't stand by now and do nothing. That's why congressional oversight like this is so important. I thank my colleagues for being here. I really appreciate it, and I look forward to Mr. Bulger's testimony. With that, Mr. Tierney, do you have an opening statement? Just very brief, Mr. Chairman, thank you. I welcome our witness here today. <coughs> Again, Mr. Chairman, I want to thank you for these hearings, which have really been a pursuit, a vigilant pursuit of the facts in this case, without reiterating yesterday's opening statement. Just say once again how important it is to shed light on the relationship between the FBI and members of organized crime so that we can determine uh, just what went on in this situation and get to the proper culture of our FBI. People need to trust this investigative body and they need to have faith in its integrity and the integrity of its agents, and the same is true of the Department of Justice. That has been the goal of this hearing, to make sure that we determine what must be done in this process with respect to informants and protected witnesses and relationships of that office. I think yesterday there was some disturbing testimony as to how at least one uh, assistant U.S. attorney or U.S. attorney uh, felt somewhat intimidated by the culture of the FBI and their attitude towards uh, how they did their work. Uh, today's uh, hearing uh, presumably will give us more information 
about uh, how the FBI operated in this area, and uh, we need to know that, and we need to move forward. So I thank you for the opportunity, and I thank the witness for being here today to uh, give us what information he may have. Mr. Meehan. Uh, Mr. Chairman, again, thank you for your um, uh, diligence and your dedication in terms of conducting these hearings, and also uh, including members of the Judiciary Committee who have oversight of the uh, uh, Justice Department. And frankly, when we look at the regulations and procedures that uh, were violated in this case, um, ultimately what this case is about is trying to make sure that this never happens again. We heard yesterday how the Boston FBI agents actively hindered Michael Huff's investigation into the murder of uh, Roger Wheeler. We heard about the terrible impact that this had on the Wheeler family. We heard extremely disturbing testimony about the practices of the Boston FBI agents and federal prosecutors. These hearings have raised serious questions about law enforcement practices in the United States. Who watches the guidelines? What happens to those who are supposed to, supposed to protect the public trust? There has been incredible distractions swirling around in the media, and I want to clear a couple of things up. First, these hearings are about getting to the truth. We're trying to get to the truth for the Wheeler family, uh, trying to get to the truth so that we make sure that these violations of the public trust never happen again. Uh, we have seen abuses in law enforcement. Frankly, in this particular instance, we saw grand jury testimony that apparently has been leaked. I don't know who leaked the information, but there is a possible violation there as well. All of these violations of the rules and procedures that law enforcement are required to follow should be followed diligently. I believe that every member of Congress uh, should make a commitment to making sure the rules and procedure are followed and to do everything we can to make sure the type of corruption that we've seen in this horrible case involving a Boston FBI office never happens again. The ultimate goal of all in Congress should be to make sure that this type of abuse in law enforcement never happens again. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Meehan, and I appreciate uh, the Judiciary Committee, and I'm confident that you folks will be pursuing uh, this investigation next year as well. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Lynch, Congressman Lynch, is on his way. He'll be here shortly. and. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll recognize him when he gets here if he wants to make a statement. Uh, before we swear in the witness, I'd just like to say to the witnesses' counsel, uh, according to the rules of the committee, uh, your client can confer with you at any time, uh, and uh, there's no problem with that. But uh, we admonish you not to participate in answering the questions. If he has reason to confer with you, he can do that. You can do it here in the room, outside, whatever you want to do. But uh, uh, we're here to hear from uh, Mr. Bulger. Certainly, Mr. Chairman, and I understand the rules. Um, I would like to ask, I, I certainly will not participate in answering the questions you pose to the witness. I think, as you know from the letter I sent yesterday, um, that I have asked you to postpone Mr. Bulger's hearing. I want to formally request it again today. The principal bastion that we have protecting us against the abuses of government is the Bill of Rights. In order to protect my client, I want to exercise rights under the Bill of Rights. It is my intention to appeal yesterday's order, and I want to formally ask you to postpone pending that appeal. And I, 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 I have no illusion that you're going to grant it, but I want to ask it. No, I understand. Uh Mr. Kiley. Mr. Kiley, have a seat. Uh, let me just say that uh, we conferred with legal counsel and we checked uh, all of the reasons why uh, we, we can't do that. Uh, we're, uh, as you know, at the end of the, the session, this investigation has been going on for a long time. And because of that and other reasons, uh, we, we can't grant an extension. That coupled with the fact that, you know, we asked uh, Mr. Bulger to testify and we had to end up sending a subpoena, so the subpoena is valid only for a period of time. So. We, uh, we feel like we must con continue today. And with that, Mr. Bulger, would you stand to be sworn, please? Do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Have a seat. Would you like to make an opening statement, Mr. Bulger? Um, let me ask if I can make it. 
I, I believe my attorney, if it, if it, uh, if it uh, is acceptable, would like to make a statement. Uh. Uh, Mr. Mr. Bulger, we, we will allow you to make any statements you want. You can mm -hmm. confer with your attorney, but we, we want to hear from you. Okay. I so could I... you pull the mic close yes. to you, sir? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, some of our communications during the past week may have resulted in misunderstanding, and that is regrettable. There certainly was no intention on my part to show disrespect to the committee or to the institution of the Congress. Uh, Mr. Chairman, under the rules of the House that the committee has provided to me, if a witness believes that the evidence or testimony he is going to give the committee may tend to defame or degrade the witness, he may request that the committee proceed in closed session. And that's Rule 11K5 of the House. And I'm asking uh, the committee to do that at this time. Mr. Bulger, we will take a vote on that at your request. Uh, we may have to uh, wait just a minute until uh, Mr. Lynch gets here. Oh, oh, Mr. Lynch is here. I'm glad you made it. But we talked about this yesterday, and uh, uh, we feel like that the issue is, is such that uh, uh, the questions should be asked in, in open session. And, uh, but we will uh, ask for a vote. All those in favor of closing the hearing to uh, the media and uh, the public, uh, say aye. All opposed, say no. 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 Uh, so it's unanimous. We will proceed in, in open session. Uh, and we talked to the parliamentarian about the rule to make sure we were following the rules, and the parliamentarian uh, concurred in, in, in uh, the rule that we just decided. Uh, so we'll proceed with the questions. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Bulger, have you talked to your brother uh, James since 1995? And if so, uh, where was he and uh, where is he now? On advice of counsel, I am unable to answer any questions today. And this position is based, among other things, on uh, privacy and due process rights and the right against being compelled to provide evidence that may tend to incriminate oneself, all of which are found in the Bill of Rights, including the rights and privileges under the First, Fifth, and Sixth Amendments to the United States Constitution. As the Supreme Court recognized in the case of Ohio versus Rainier, one of the Fifth Amendment's basic fun functions is to protect innocent men who might be ensnared by ambiguous circumstances. I find myself in such circumstances, and hence stand on my constitutional rights as advised by counsel. Uh, I presume then that uh, any of the questions uh, posed to you by the committee will be met with the same uh, Fifth Amendment uh, response. Yes, sir. Well, unless uh, members of the committee have some uh, comments or questions, uh, Jim, is there anything that you think we should proceed further with? Any comments or questions from the members? Well, you have that right, uh, Mr. Bulger, and uh, we'll honor that right, and uh, the committee stands adjourned. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <coughs>